Hey Rebel Scum, and welcome back to our monthly rewind session. I wanted to do something different for you this time. In the past, we've either done play sets or done sort of a featurette on an action figure through the years. Uh, today, uh, I'm a huge fan of vintage, so what I want to show to you are Palatoy advertisements from the 70s and 80s, uh, which were some really cool artwork and a really interesting way to display these action figures. And I think a lot of you may have seen them at celebrations given out in the form of either uh, pins or buttons or placemats or magnets. But uh, I'm going to be showing you the actual vintage artwork, which is pretty cool. And uh, you might be wondering, how do I track this stuff down if I want it? Well, it came in a lot of UK magazines. Uh, one was called Star Wars Weekly, which was a comic, essentially. And the other one, um, you could be finding, honestly, in Doctor Who magazine. <laughs> uh, I got one right here as an example. Uh, while I was over at Celebration this year, I stopped by a couple of uh, vintage shops and I found a lot of these uh, booklets and picked up a, a bunch. And uh, I knew kind of roughly how to find these things, but I didn't know exactly where they were. So it took a little bit of time, but I, I tracked them down. Um, uh, so essentially, uh, you wouldn't expect it, but you would turn uh, through the pages. And of course it's Doctor Who stuff. And then like you get one page deep and you find this amazing artwork here for Dengar in the Palatoy line, showing off the character in this very ominous and posing look in all his vintage glory. So uh, a couple like this I'll show you. Uh, but these were pretty cool, pretty unique things um, that they had in the UK that sort of made a big splash in the uh, US uh, for years on afterward now. Um, like I said, you've seen them in a lot of collector um, sort of products. Some people make them up, put them on shirts, but we'll show you guys the original ones today and a little bit of a gallery walk. So why don't you join me and I'll show you uh, what I got. So my enemy for this bit is gonna be reflections in shadows. I have everything encased in glass here, essentially to prevent further yellowing and uh, aging of these magazines, because they're pretty old. Uh, but you could see this great advertisements here. This is a very popular one, the toys of the film with that little weird kind of shaking going on around the characters. But you could see uh, Obi-Wan here, Luke, R2, Princess Leia, Han and Chewie. So you get all your hero characters here. Um, yeah, this is a nice 1977 um, piece of art going over the original characters right around the time of the movie before they even came out. So this is uh, pretty cool. This is sort of like an early look at these. I love that detail on Chewbacca, even though he looked nothing like that in the end. Everyone else is fairly close, but it's just cool to see that kind of artwork here on this uh, Palatoy advertisement. Uh, over here, I have a collection of different ones here. You've probably seen some of these, one being Darth Vader's TIE Fighter. I thought this was really cool with the uh, C-3PO and R2-D2 calling that out. Uh, we have this great bounty hunter um, little capture log where you could cut uh, some UPCs up and mail them in this kit in order to get a free figure. Uh, I believe it was uh, um, Dengar, and I'll show you that advertisement that corresponds with it in a minute. Uh, over here is a very common one you're seeing on a lot of um, magnets and stuff at Celebration or Printouts. Uh, this was a very small advertisement, actually. It wasn't its own page. It was a clip I took out here. But it has uh, Luke in his pilot outfit here, um, buddying up with R5-D4 and the Gonk droid and the Death Star droid, I guess. And then uh, along that, he's facing off against uh, what they call Green Greedo. I love that. Uh, Snaggletooth, Walrus Man, and Hammerhead. So a nice little shot of all the aliens. And then over here, we have the Palatoy Collection, which is going over several of the play sets and figures. So you have, of course, our Epitomous Droids here, RDD2 and C-3PO with the Palatoy Cantina. You can see that extra little carve out there for the, um, the seat and the bottom, which made that a little different than the uh, uh, standard Kenner version. And then you have the Droid Factory. So pretty cool to see that as well. And then below that, the Land of the Jawas playset. So just going over all the different um, variety of products you had in 1979 from Palatoy. So fun little artwork, fun little um, decoration there. Uh, so let's check out a couple others now. All right, moving on to our next row, we have one of my more favorite 
pieces here, and it's a promotional artwork for a new film coming out called The Empire Strikes Back. Perhaps you heard of it. It features C-3PO with a gun, which you don't really see a whole lot. So I kind of love it for that reason. Uh, this was just a uh, sort of competition you could do, drawing a droid with some toys. So a little bit of fun there from Palatoy. Uh, next one over, we have what I was talking about, that Bounner, Bounty Hunter um, Capture Log prize, which is this Dengar. Now, he came in a couple different versions. I showed you the one in Doctor Who. This is from uh, Star Wars Weekly magazine. It's glossy. You could tell it's a little bit different here. I kind of like this one. It stood out a little bit better with that gloss, but I love that look of this figure where he's kind of looking down on his prey. Uh, and they have this really great detailed look of him. So very cool to see this sort of portrayal of Dengar there with the Bounty Hunter capture lock. And next to that is going to be my favorite one in this set. And that's going to be the Boba Fett. Now, Boba Fett here, in addition to looking awesome and his Kenner design, has this great call out of everything he has on the character that uh, as a kid we just didn't know about. <laughs> so it was great to see all these little call outs, grappling hook, the rocket pack, the storage pack, the rocket pack controls. Like it really broke down the character so neatly here. Uh, I think it's just really cool to see this piece. This is one of the harder ones to track down, too. Um, I kind of love it, though. Totally worth it. Took me, uh, took me a while. Um, I'll say it was the second hardest one. I'll show you the hardest one at the end. But uh, this one was definitely cool and it, just an amazing um, look for this vintage Kenner figure. And it's one of my favorite advertisements. So moving on, we get an Empire Strikes Back advertisement here. Uh, I have everything organized by film, so we're deep into ESP territory at this point. Has that great tagline, can the Empire ever be destroyed? Uh, showing a bunch of characters. These There's no specific figure artwork here, but all these guys were turned into characters uh, that you could eventually get. So this was pretty spot on at the time. So it's a nice little tease for what you can expect. And then over here, we have that amazing Darth Vader carrying case. Uh, so this one, I believe you could get this with some mail aways at the time. Um, let's see here. Yep. You could see Dengar you could have got with a couple of um, UPCs and some money. Survival kit, a couple of UPCs, their favorite character case, six UPCs and money. So you bought six figures, sent in, uh, what was it, seven pounds, and you got this case. So not too bad. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, they, gave, they had a lot of uh, giveaways at the time, I guess. Um, it was a lot easier to do mail-ins. I remember that in the uh, Power of the Force line, too. We had mail-ins for Han and Bomar Monk. And um, we had a mail-in for, uh, or, or I'm sorry, not Bomar Monk. He had it by him. It was uh, Spirit of Obi-Wan from um, one of the cereals or chips or something like that. Over here, we have this uh, action figure display. So it's a color version of figures from the new line. Uh, this one you see very commonly around. I've seen it on some t-shirts and stuff too. And it's the action figure display stand underneath them as well with the backdrop. So kind of cool to see these drawn out and in color as opposed to the black and whites there. Uh, and I think that kind of covers us for our Empire Strikes Back look. So now we're going to move on to Return of the Jedi. This is one of the more common advertisements I've seen at conventions. People put it on a lot of things, on posters, on um, magnets, on pins. And it was when you got the Rancor Keeper for free with the purchase of other characters. So pretty cool. I uh, love this artwork of him just kind of chilling there. Uh, makes him look a lot more important than he is for the the uh, literal like 30 seconds he's in the film. So uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool one. Uh, next to him, we have the advertisement for the Bandolier which, uh, man, that foam just kind of dissolved over the years. It did not hold up well. <laughs> Same with a lot of their foam on the Dagobah set, on the Trash Monster, um, as well on the Death Star. But, uh, yeah, this is an advertisement for Chewbacca and his bandolier. Action figure, little gimmick you could get. Over here is another one of the um, free giveaways. That, like This one's pretty cool, too, because it's the, uh, the Emperor, and it's by the troops. Get the leader for free. So you brought some of the troop characters here. Uh, it says, by any six, and you get the Emperor for free. So he was one of the big mail aways you can get as well. So this was sort of the advertisement they had um, for him overseas. So pretty cool. You could see him there flanked by his Royal Guard, by a Stormtrooper, by Darth Vader, by the Scout Trooper. I mean, they got a nice assortment of characters that were there in his Imperial procession when he arrived on the Death Star 2. They're just missing the TIE Fighters, which they could have threw one of those pilots in there as well. Um, so that wraps it there for this row. Let's check out one more row. Okay, so still on Return of the Jedi. 
this is a painting competition. Uh, this one's not specifically for uh, the figures, but uh, or advertising the figures. But this was kind of cool of uh, just showing you that you could win a whole uh, win a whole bunch of prizes. But it's got pretty much the character or the you know the figure versions of the characters here with that Gamorian guard and the Max Rebo. So it's kind of fun. Uh, call out. You can even see the Ewok playset in the background and Jabba over there on the right. So this was a cool little um, advertisement as well. Uh, over here, not an advertisement, but I just love this cover of Darth Vader on the Spider-Man and Zoids um, UK issue with him. What looks like he's slaughtering a bunch of G.I. Joes. <laughs> so it was just so unique. I had to have it. Um, I love it. Um, big Vader fan. Anything unique in Vader was uh, pretty cool. Uh, so this is a issue from 1986, you can see there in the corner. And then lastly over here, I have Darth Vader on his death quest. Again, Star Wars Weekly. These are the magazines I'm talking about that you find these advertisements in. And it just has some really interesting artwork. I mean, you have Darth Vader here with a green lightsaber. Uh, you have this all black or this weird bluish thing. Uh, you have these really bizarre looking stormtroopers in the background there. And then uh, again, which looks like a G.I. Joe here <laughs> that he's killing basically, but he's supposed to be a rebel. Uh, so just a lot going on there. Um, I just think these are really cool. So I picked them up uh, just for the, the Darth Vader and the, the uniqueness of it. So I got one more um, uh, Palatoy advertisement I want to show you. And it was the hardest one that I had to track down. So let's check out that. Okay, here it is. This is the hardest thing uh, I had to track down. Uh, and I'll add the caveat in English. Easy to find this in German, in Italian, in Spanish. Very, very difficult to find an original one of these in English. And this is the Return of the Jedi uh, competition that would allow you to be one of the first people to see the movie if you want it. Uh, or won a whole bunch of other prizes. So I took this one out of the, the case basically because it's two-sided and it was a booklet. So it folds in half here at the seam. And I'll go over basically what you had to do to win. And you got this great comic. And essentially you had to write the next panel uh, in order to win this and be selected. And essentially what is so cool about this comic is it's, uh, you know, as people argue, the first appearance of Emperor Palpatine. Uh, in the flesh, other than his holographic image, and that's this hand here that's being teased with the Skywalker um, writing. So that's just kind of uh, cool to see that. <laughs> it's uh, a little bizarre, um, and they just kind of wanted you to take uh, your crack at who you thought this mysterious figure was. So um, yeah, this was uh, pretty interesting. I loved it just for that, for the this tease of Emperor Palpatine, where all you got to see was his really, uh, you know, scarred, decrepit looking hand here, uh, jaundiced out on the page, screaming Skywalker. Uh, so very cool little uh, advertisement uh, competition. Um, very difficult to track down. It took me several years to find this um, in English. Uh, like I said, you could probably track down the, the other versions of it, but it's just neat. I, I see it as kind of like the first appearance of Emperor Palpatine. And this is a fun little um, contest they had as well. So that about covers it for this month's Rebels Come Rewind. I hope you found that interesting, uh, informative, or just plain cool. Uh, there's some really great artwork out there. I, I love the Boba Fett one. It's just so cool to see all those call outs. Uh, I love C-3PO with the gun. It's just so unique uh, for, I, I believe that was uh, 79 uh, that occurred around. And it's just at that time period, you're just like a droid with a gun. Wasn't <laughs> We didn't have the prequels on the horizon yet, so that was kind of new for us. Uh, other than IG-88 in that scene, it wasn't, um, or, or Forlom, you weren't seeing like a protocol droid with a gun. So that was cool. Uh, so yeah, this is not documented very well on a lot of websites in terms of where you could find these things. Um, at least it wasn't when I was trying to track all these down and it took me a while. But uh, if you guys are interested in a specific piece that you want to try to get for yourself, let me know. If you try to just buy it directly from eBay, it could cost you hundreds of dollars uh, when somebody has that. Uh, but I can try to get you the the name of or the <clears throat> specific issue of either Star Wars Weekly or Doctor Who that you could crack into to try to find it. Um, it's gonna it's harder and harder to track these down, particularly online. Um, it's easier to do it in country. So if you're ever over in uh, in the UK, uh, that's your best bet of trying to track these down. But uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this segment. Um, trying something different here. We can try more different things like this in the future, showing some vintage. Um, interesting vintage pieces uh just let us know 
um, we're coming up on uh, September. I'm hoping that we get that um, Boba Fett throne room uh, in time that I could show you a great segment on Jabba's palace next and how to fill out the palace. We'll call it party at the palace or something like that. Uh, I would love to show you that display and all the different characters that I put together over the years that were in that scene. So hopefully that will be the next one you see me in. Uh, if not, we're going to also be at Toy Fair next month, so check that out. We'll have any interesting drops coming from a variety of producers that we'll be showing you guys that at the end of the month. And maybe I'll have some surprises before then as well. So as always, like, subscribe, and follow. There's always something new on Rebel Scum every day. Until then, stay vigilant, you Rebel Scum. <laughs>